It all starts with Team to win, you insult them. <laughs> I mean, that was amazing. Right? <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, like, especially that M part, that was amazing. Why the was graphics? I not in it? Oh. Oh, yeah, right. Um, look, so I might have totally forgot to put you in it, but it's fine. We can fix it. Um, Okay. Who are you again? Uh, are you serious? Bro, we cast together for three goddamn years. I was here when LEC started. I have, I picked my background is literally us at the caster desk. Uh, oh yeah, right. Um, Bender. Ender. Fender. Ender. Yeah, no, it's not really ringing a bell. Look, don't worry about it, man. Look, this happens to all the new casters. I'm not new! I killed them all. You underestimate my power. I literally crossed an ocean for this. winter season live from Berlin, Germany. Winter season, indeed, it actually started snowing uh, a while ago, as you can see by the thick coats that the G2 members are wearing as they have their fans welcoming into the studio and two XL fans as well, welcoming XL to the studio. Amazing. Uh, so uh, our team names may be the same, actually for most of them. Some teams have actually changed overall, but we'll get into all of that. There's a lot to say, but overall, super exciting start of the new year with a new format as said. That's why we're calling it LEC Winter, but we're getting ready to kick everything off in an hour-long ready check. I'm Shox, joined here by Dagda, by Goldberg, and by Blender, and uh, there's some faces that we've seen before that have returned, some that have continued to be here, and Dagda, our newest addition. Can we get yeah. an applause for Dagda? <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool to be here. I mean, look, I got to guest a little bit last year and it was kind of cool to see what happens behind the scenes, but being here full time is absolutely incredible. Being in the sixth studio as well is so cool. It's true, but it's yeah. only like your first week, so maybe you'll yeah, change yeah. your mind after a little bit. Uh, Goldberg, also congratulations and welcome back. Thank you very much and super excited to be here with all the talent. Dr. showed me the ropes in the LPL. I get to show him the ropes in the LEC now, of course, and super motivated to just get this year started. And Blender, so happy to have you. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's, it's great me, to be introduce back. Introduce yourself, back. Introduce yourself. I'm, I'm, uh, Right, yeah, so I'm this Valorant caster. Okay. I was doing that for about two years, but I'm really excited to show what I know about Neon. You know the color Zeri yeah. over here. Yeah, they do. I'm, I'm ready. They do. Yeah, we'll see indeed. Uh, overall, though, um, it feels so different. Even though, of course, we are back in the studio, we know our trophy, but it will be a lot harder to get it this time around. Goldberg, the new format is super exciting. We don't really know what to expect, but if anything, I'm happy that in the middle of the split, we're not like, all right, it's week six, and these teams aren't really going to make it, and uh, it's completely different, and I love the dynamic. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm ten, more excited, ten times more excited with the new format. The fact that, you know, best of three still, still matter, 
but they'll matter even more. You have to make it into that top eight breaking point and then just continuing into best of threes, like inject me with it. I'm so ready for it. Yeah, and especially if you can see some of the experimentation as well in those best of threes, that's what I'm really excited to see. Oh, let's see what happens. But before we take a deep dive into what is ahead of us, let's remind ourselves of our favorite LEC moments and memories from the past year. Very, very perksy. Why am I here? But it just looks really troll to me. Finn manages to have a good flash. Okay, Finn has a good flash. <laughs> <laughs> the first card I'm going to play is a reckless fist bump pose, and then upsets, whose stats are doubled if there's no reckless on the field. It's GG. You're over. I win. Yeah, that's, that's, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, 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 the birthday boy still standing, Larson's done. He knocks him back. We wanted to know how they would get into range, and Larson delivers them. Son Larson, he is the one that matters, but he's knocked back. Larson, his kingdom will fall. G2 tearing Rogue to pieces. A master class from G2 and the birthday boy. Oh my God, Jogu, buddy, did you just spellbook smite the cannon away from your AD carry? <laughs> Korean mechanics, baby. <laughs> It is my pleasure to present to you the ultimate European heavyweight clash. The crown! Oh, here we go. This looks like it might just be it. Humanoid making it out to safety. Full control of the midway. Flack at the Gale Force forward. That's a mark on the Humanoid. Boom, oh, baby! Ophelios damage. Oh, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. Oh, they're gonna do it. Here it comes. Berlin! Make some noise! What a banger are we in for? Rogue and G2 Esports clash it out for the final battle of the season in order to find out who will lift the trophy. It's gonna be a banger. First they came for Vitality, then for Misfits, then for Fnatic, and now the death of Rogue is written in stone. G2 claim their ninth title. Rogue is down. T1 is next. G2 booked their ticket to MSI. Guys, look, there is a sign. Danzara picks Karner. I can lock it in, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, here we go! Oh! <laughs> Get over here! That damage is disgusting! Horror forced to run for his life. The Cataclysm not going to be available for the free trees! <laughs> <Get> <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Ten years of excellence, 20 seasons of competition. No matter the year, the meta, or the name on our league, Peak League of Legends has come from Europe. Like, <laughs> that's me! <laughs> Let's go! This is a triple for the Callista! It is Malrang finding Capital! Let's try to make it a quadra, baby! Penta. The, the picks are coming down! They want to get on the Penta! It's the finals! And baby, we're in Sweden! Give it to Carb! It's a Penta! It's a Penta! It's a Penta! And this is it! The first moments! of Rogue's legacy. They will not be knocked down. They will not be denied. They will not be stopped. Malmo, Rogue are your champions. Oh, absolute goosebumps looking at everything, but especially ending it with the Malmo highlight, of course, and the Rogue, as said so eloquently by Draco, starting their legacy. Um, it was a beautiful weekend all over, I think, GB. Just being there in front of the fans for the first time back on the big stage, it was great. I mean, it was my first time in an arena as well, and, and, and seeing Rogue, like, almost struggling against Fnatic, coming back, and then the entire finals. I mean, I could not put it better. It was just beautiful. I don't have better words for it. It was beautiful, and then promptly, it's now coy, but, um, you know, that's, that's how things go. That's a whole other yeah. sort of story. Yeah. You know, we were, we were as, while we were watching the video, I actually went to the Discord and, like, asked people, like, give their favorite memories, and 
I thought we were going to get some like wholesome, awesome stuff. No. Uh, no, first thing I saw was Vitality failing to make playoffs. Aww. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was here. But like that whole race at the end of the summer split to try and make it in with Misfits showing up as well. I know we got a Misfits fan right over there. Um, but uh, it, was, it was a whole lot of fun as the regular season oh, was coming Oh, yeah, at LEC regular, actually. <laughs> Cool. Uh, yeah, GB, you were talking about this in rehearsal as well. That was crazy. I hope that uh, in our new format, of course, we're also going to get that much excitement. It won't be in that form, though. It will be in another one. But that was a day to remember. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, uh, there's sure lots of actions that we're still going to get. We don't have to get like these tiebreakers in the best of one scenarios. We get the best of three. We get the best of five. So I'm happy to let go of that to get what's coming instead. Dag, of course, you weren't here for the entire season, but... Yeah, I mean, I honestly, the favorite part for me was getting the fans back. I mean, I'd never actually cast in front of a live crowd before, so having the fans come back into the studio meant a lot to me, and kind of getting to experience that here for the first time in Berlin was just so sick. Yeah, and you're going to get it all year, yeah. which is awesome. There was also a couple of things that happened at the end of the year um, of 2022. It, it kind of is the mm. elephant in the room. Um, and that's no, that. We don't have to. That's no, that's we don't, fine. We no, actually it's don't. All, it's yeah. all good. Moving on, <laughs> enough from the past. Time for the present. The League of Legends preseason and the new patch 13.1. So cute. Perhaps <laughs> quite a few changes. So here, uh, are, so here's our video, rather, to summarize the most important beats. Throw it away. Welcome to the LEC patch rundown. Today, we'll be taking a look at the changes in patch 13.1. Since we last saw the LEC teams, there have been some shakeups on the Rift with a lot of new additions that will affect pro play. I'm going to hit some of the highlights as we count down towards week one of the LEC Winter Split. First of all, the return of an old friend. The Chemtech Drake has been revamped and reshaped to wreak havoc on Summoner's Rift. Killing the Drake and claiming the soul will grant your team tenacity as well as increased damage and damage reduction. While the Chemtech Rift thankfully no longer has those weird fog zones that it used to have, for now, empowers all the plants to create some interesting opportunities for pro players. We also have a brand new champion, the pride of Nazuma, aka Kasante. And if you haven't seen him yet in your solo queue games, it's because he's always banned. No, you don't! His passive Dauntless Instinct allows Kasante to mark enemies hit for a short duration. He deals damage and slows enemies hit with his Q, knocks back and stuns enemies with his W, gives himself and allies a shield with his E, and that's all before we even get to his ultimate. In all-out form, Kasante gains attack damage that scales with his armor and magic assist, and his abilities gain cooldown reduction, more damage, and his E dash gets increased range and speed, and also he has an auto attack reset. Although he does have to sacrifice some of his health, armor, and magic resist, so I'm sure you'll definitely be able to kill him before he suplexes you over a wall into his whole team. From a newcomer in the top lane to a veteran, Jax has gotten a small rework in patch 13.1, including a brand new ultimate and some increased AP ratios. And, like Cassante, we also expect him to be angling for some action in the top lane. Despite the AB buffs, you can still see the traditional Jax build with a Blade of the Ruin King and Divine Sundra being high on this fisherman's shopping list. Some new as well as returning items have taken over the rift. The combination of a buffed Seraph's Embrace plus the revival of Rod of Ages is a powerful duo on the likes of Ryze and Cassidy, although some of us are still upset that Rod of Ages isn't purple anymore. Also, the new mythic Jack Show the Protean is a go-to item for tanks, and even for some bruisers. In the jungle, you'll see a new friend helping you to catch them all. Players can choose between the green tank, red damage, or blue mobility-focused jungle pet to increase their strength throughout the game. Across the board, we have a lot of new changes to keep an eye on here in week one, so let's see what happens when the teams hit the rift for patch 13.1. Thank you for tuning in to the LEC's Patch Rundown. Thank you, Medic, for that incredible patch breakdown. Of course, a lot of information there to digest. So let's just look at what has been affecting pro play so far as the LCK and LPL have already kicked off. A couple of champions already coming yeah. out. Medic mentioned Cassante, but I think the mid lane is kind of where we have to shift our focus. Yeah, I think Medic touched on it because of the changes to Rod of Ages and Archangels, right? Going back to ability power instead of uh, haste, you just go towards things like Rise and Cassin. And Syndra changes have actually made her a quite high pick ban. The win rate's not so good, but that's the mid lane pool for now. Excellent. Yeah. But Kendra, my favorite lane is the bot lane. And to be honest, I was getting really tired of Lucian Nami. What exciting new things do we have in the bot lane? Um, oh. Uh, we've got 
Oh, I see. We've got Lucian Nami. Okay. It's like, uh, you know, but, there's no, <laughs> but there's no Zeri Yumi, right? Surely Yumi can't be playable anymore. They've nerfed her like a hundred times. Surely, surely that's not playable anymore, right? Yeah. Mark, no. what do we do when there's actually no changes and there's nothing to talk about? <laughs> you know when you go to your favorite restaurant and you yeah. want to go, you, you can order like five different things? Yeah. All of it's like out of stock. They've only got one thing. Yeah. That's basically the situation we've got on our hands here. You know when you're a weatherman and it's like, it's summer, what's the weather? Is it, is it hot? It's hot. Oh. <laughs> that's the better. 3.1. <laughs> Might not be one. so hot. 13.1, uh, 13.2, we might hope for a little bit more. In the meantime, hope you like a little bit of Lucian Nami versus uh, Zeri Lulu. That's all from us here on the 13.1 <laughs> update. Let's send it over to our new video editor intern, Lore, for an important announcement. What's the point of our yeah. talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One sec, one sec, one sec. Oh, I'm not finished yet. Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I was just putting the finishing notes because I wanted to make sure that everything is perfect. Yeah, plug this in somewhere, please, please. I'm really, really excited to be sharing this news with you today. And I wanted to make sure that everything was right and perfect. So can we turn down the lights, please? Lights, lights. Yeah, thanks. All right. Thank you. Roll the clip now. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. LEC comes to... Of course, Roma is struggling for oui. this one. Oh, they gave you a like. On va à la maison. On va à la maison. Nice. Scepter. I think that's the one from 2019. Bad memories, but still. Lots to celebrate by the end of the year. We will be back in France, that's right. We will be bringing the 2023 LEC Finals to Montpellier, Occitanie, and we're so excited to bring in the finals back to France, and that's why we couldn't wait to share the news. Of course, we will be having a full announcement later in the year, including all the information about dates, times, tickets, and more. Roman, I'm, I'm glad that you wearing something for once. I hope you will be joining us on stage they by the end no of choice. the year. I had to wear yeah, something. Yeah, of course. Okay. But I'm super, super, super right. excited to go back to France. It was Likewise. a banger last time we were there. So again, French audience, best in the world. We'll be a banger. We have to prove it again. Uh, what are you doing here though? Your team is playing in 30 minutes. Yeah, we're Can getting ready. Can't wait. Go for back and fight them. Go back month. and find them. Thank you for joining me though. Good luck with G2 today. And that's all for us here now. But after the break, we'll listen to the latest comebacks of the league's edgiest casters. And we're discussing the most important roster changes of the old season. So stay tuned. Before we go though, let's check our brand new LEC 2023 season formats. Hello, LEC lovers. I hope you missed us because we are back. Before we kick off our 2023 winter split, let's take a look at the changes to our format that will make the most entertaining league in the world the most entertaining league in the universe. First things first, it's time to update your calendars because every week is now a super week. We have three game days during the splits, with the LEC now being broadcast on Saturday, Sunday, and Mondays. As you may already know, the LEC has expanded to winter, spring, and summer splits, with the season finals rounding off the year. Each split has an identical format, so let's take a look at how a split is laid out. Each split will be made up of three stages. The regular season, featuring best of ones. The group stage, where we are introducing best of threes, and the playoffs, with pure, high-octane best of five action. In the regular season, all 10 teams will face off against one another in a single round robin best of one. The top eight teams from the regular season will qualify for the group stage. Teams will be separated into four seeded pools before being randomly drawn into two groups of four, both groups taking one team from each pool. Within these groups, teams will play best of threes with the aim of winning enough series to advance to the playoffs. The highest seed in each group will pick their first opponent from the two lowest seed teams and from there, it's quite simple. Win two series and you're through, lose two, and you are out. Think of it as a best of three of uh, best of threes. The remaining four teams will compete in the playoffs. The first team to qualify from each group will face off in the upper bracket best of five, while the other two square off in the lower bracket best of five. After four thrilling series, we'll crown our split champion. Our split winners will take home a fancy piece of silverware and a guaranteed spot in the season finals. Once we wrap up the spring split, two of our LEC teams will represent EMEA at MSI. 
After three splits of fierce competition, we entered the most high stakes moment in the year for our competitors, the season finals. The season finals will be made up of six teams. Our split champions from winter, spring, and summer, with the remaining slots being filled by the teams who have earned the most championship points throughout the year. So you might be asking, how do you earn championship points? Championship points will be earned based on the final placement of the team for winter, spring, and summer splits, with the winter and spring splits offering the same amount of points and the summer splits offering more. The six qualified teams will then be seeded based on those championship points with a few small exceptions. If a team has won two splits, they are guaranteed a minimum of fourth seed at the season finals. If a team has won all three splits, they are guaranteed first seed, and to further reward their dominance, they earn a guaranteed minimum lowest seed at Worlds. Once that is decided, our six teams compete in best of fives over the course of four weeks, with the goal of lifting the one and only LEC trophy, being crowned the champion of EMEA, and representing our region as our number one seed at Worlds. We can't wait to see our 10 teams battle it out with this new format and embark on our most exciting LEC season yet. We kick things off on Saturday, the 21st of January. See you there.
became champions, now we're right back at the start. You made me break blue walls of pain while you laid waste to all I gave. I kept the faith, your sins so grave, and now I'll never be the same. It's the same old story. Many of you might be wondering why there's so much conversation and focus around the player Reckless. Some of you may not even know who the hell he is. So let's give a bit of context. Reckless has been playing professional league in Europe for nearly a decade. In that time, he has appeared in eight LEC finals where he has won four of them. He was crowned regular season MVP four times and has a total of six pentakills, the highest in LEC's history. Even after not playing in the LEC for a whole year, he has a grand total of 483 games played in the LEC, the third highest of all players. On top of this, he also has the highest number of kills at 2,081. This is more than 400 kills higher than the next highest player. Reckless is one of the most accomplished players in Europe's history. But why does any of this matter? Well, he's done most of this on Fnatic. Of the 16 splits he's played, 13 of these were spent with Fnatic. Every time he left, Reckless could not replicate the level of success he was used to. And now, he's back. After a year with G2 and another year not in the LEC at all, he returns to the home of his success, and the question becomes, can he reclaim his former glory? I love that. Also, thank you for doing uh, the monologue, so <laughs> I didn't have to. But all jokes aside, though, I, I think people might be wondering, like, oh, why you're building him up so much? You know, do you think he's going to be the best ADC in the league? That's not it. It's about that legacy and about will he even be able to rekindle that? I think that is the most important storyline coming into this. Uh, the question marks of does he still have it? That's really the big question. And I think when you look at his most recent performances, the answer is probably no. Because when you uh, think about how his performance was on KT, their most recent split, they finished sixth, last in the playoffs. Like, while he was able to succeed at the EMEA Masters earlier in the year, overall, KT and Reckless did not find the success that people were expecting them to find. And then the fact that he's just returning kind of unexpectedly, a lot of people did not have him on the list of players no. that they wanted back in the LEC. So 
there are a lot of question marks around the level of performance that he will be able to bring to the LEC. Oh, definitely. And when we look at also the team that he's in and a Fnatic with a very interesting configuration, of course, you have Wonder up in that top lane who he knows very well. A Fnatic who reached high highs, but I don't think exactly as high as they would have wanted last year, obviously. Um, when it comes to his flexibility and his ability to both adapt to what is thrown at him, as well as live up to kind of the young generation of ADCs, where do you see him landing? Well, this is it. I think in the past, Reckless has always been touted as someone that can play any and all AD carries, right? But when you look at some past history, I remember that a certain patch where he refused to play Callista. There are certain patches where he only played Civit. Has he evolved as a player? Can he actually di uh, dip more into the pool? What can he actually bring rather than just a gem? Yeah. You know, I'm excited to see what Reckless can do, but definitely when we look at top 80 carries, especially with the pool that we have, it's going to be difficult for him to perform at the same level that can match the history that he's had throughout his long career. From a gut check, who are you looking at in the ADC role that you think are really going to show us things? Here? I mean, I think Comp, Patrick, and yeah. Upst uh, Upset, my apologies. <laughs> I mean, I still think he's an incredibly talented AD carry. He he's one of the big surprises that we don't see this split. But Hans Sama and his return, I think those are the main AD carries that I'm going to be looking at this split to kind of sit at the top of the table and the people the Reckless is going to have to compete against. Yeah, a couple of the rookies as well, of course, uh, looking. And I think that's the interesting thing about this split and the winter split overall. We'll talk about it later, but established players that aren't necessarily finding their homes with the team they've always been with, but that now have to adjust to everything as everyone else. Now, rumors, though, they have been spreading like wildfire this offseason as well. And a lot's been said about Reckless's return to Fnatic. So we've lined up three guests with close ties to Reckless that have some shocking stories to tell. Here with us now, if everything is working, is Mr. Attender. Uh, Attende. Oh, my mistake. Uh, thank you for coming. You are apparently KCOR's janitor. Uh, head janitor. Yes, yes. All right. Well, most of us saw your post on Reddit saying that Reckless would often visit the bathroom alone. Would you care to expand on that? Uh, indeed, yes. We called it the toilet issue back at HQ. I, I found several words carved into the bathroom stall over and over again. The same sentence repeated dozens of times. Jin is meta. Jin is meta. Jin is meta. It seemed like a, a cry for help. Incredible. He could make a mark on the bathroom stall, but not in-game. Mm. Yeah, but, but that wasn't the half of it. You see, he, he would always fail to replace the toilet paper when the roll ran out. What? So how was he as a teammate? Uh, well, once I even heard him coming out without washing his hands. What? Yeah, okay. but, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, really. That doesn't matter, though. What are your expectations for this year? Surely the other oh. players must have talked about him. Oh, I mean, well, I've, I've heard only good things about him. A uh, pleasure to work with, uh, a very hard worker at that, but a disaster in the bathroom. Anyways, I've got to go. BDS just signed me to a huge contract. Much to do. All right, well, better BDS than IBS, I guess. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. A lot of interesting insights here, I think. We do have a few more interviews lined up. I'm hearing from my producers, almost ready. We're having someone uh, very close to Reckless. In fact, it may be Reckless's personal Lawyer? Let's see. Uh, they can't find him. Oh, okay, hello. Uh, Mr. Pretender? Uh, uh, no, just Pretender. Oh. You are Reckless's lawyer? Uh, well, I can't legally say that I'm his lawyer, uh, attorney, client, privilege, and all that, but I can tell you that I'm not Upset's lawyer. Ah. Uh, would you care to respond to the janitor's comments? Well, yes. As mm, lawyer and Reckless's third cousin twice removed, I can tell you that Reckless declines to comment. Okay. And what rumor did you hear? Ah, well, my sources say that Reckless has spent most of the last year doing charity work, becoming a better person, contributing to society. So if he ever was underperforming in game, which I'm not saying he was, uh, it was certainly something to do with his philanthropic efforts. Oh, well, we definitely all saw the charitable contributions he made to Game Ward in Objection. the LFL playoffs. Well, you can't object Overruled. to that. Overruled! Uh, okay, so how would you then address public concerns that Reckless may Objection. or may not be washed up? Relevance, Your Honor. Relevance? He's returning to the LEC after a year. Besides, this isn't a court of no, law, No, this interview is adjourned. Fine. Fine. Okay. Um, I feel like those are both pretty biased. Let's see if we have everyone else. I believe we have... One more interview live from outside. An LEC super fan for Fnatic. He's been camping outside of our studio doors for the past week. Uh, your IGN is Chicken Tender? My mother gave me that name. Ah, sorry. So you've been uh, camped outside the LEC studio for how long? 
Oh, three weeks. Oh, you're certainly dedicated. When did you get that work done on your arm? Oh, well, the crazy thing was I got a reckless and falafel tattoo right before the 2018 World Finals, but I blacked out both my arms after that when he betrayed us and left to G2. The only song on my Spotify rap 2021 was Reckless With My Heart. So you can imagine how excited I was to find out that he also covered up his tattoos, you know? Arr. And he's returning to Fanatic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that too. Okay, so what did you hear about Reckless then? Oh, well, my pal that recently joined the team, he was telling me about how Reckless is the hardest worker. He's been grinding every day, playing a lot of solo queue. But he really wanted me to remind you and everyone else that Jin is really strong in the current meta. I'm telling you, as an AD carry, though, not as a support. Thank you. That is really insightful. Yeah, and, and also what that janitor Pet was saying janitor. earlier. Oh, right, right. What he was saying earlier was completely untrue. I double-checked, triple-checked, quadruple-checked, and Reckless definitely replaces his toilet paper when he runs out. Uh, so I wouldn't trust a word of what him and that lawyer guy were saying. Well, believe any of this or not, there are a lot of opinions and eyes on Reckless heading into our year. I even heard a rumor that his favorite band is against the current, not League's edgiest cast. No, th that's ridiculous. That well, is not true. You didn't get it from Slander. me. Slander. Ha! Oh, well, it's always nice when we get these exclusive insights from people really close to the players. Even better when we get an actual player. Odawamne, hello. Hello, everyone. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> I, I enjoyed the uh, uh, Blender's triple personalities that he showcased over there. It was, it, it, it was great. You're, yeah. a, you're a real one. He is a real one. <laughs> uh, so the reason we got Odo on the desk is, of course, uh, we have Reckless, who is back in Fnatic and is a very experienced player. But there's many players with a lot of stature in the LEC that have actually joined new teams, completely different environments. Let's start with you then, Odo. Now on Excel, what can you tell us? Uh, I mean, I'm going to have an excellent year over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, definitely it's, it's a new challenge given that um, I left or like... Um, yeah, I'm not with I'm not with uh, Rogue now, Koi. After winning the LEC, so it's definitely going to be a new challenge. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where you need to just kind of match what you just did. Otherwise, everyone's going to be like, "Oh, they were right to to let him go and stuff like that." You know, but uh, a lot of players are in are in this situation, like me and and Yankos now as well in in Heretics. So it's definitely not, you know. Uh, a funny situation. It's kind of like one of those lose-lose situations oh. in terms of communi community perspective in that yeah. sense. Because, I mean, everyone loves storylines and stuff and they love to latch onto everything. But it's definitely a challenge that I think a lot of us welcome. I think that's really interesting perspective indeed, Vedi, right? Uh, they have to perform now because, as he says, the fans are going to be like, well, see, better off without you. Typical. I mean, that's one of the... It's hindsight analysis, right? Yeah. It's the, the beauty of being able to look back on what was. But uh, one of the things that we do get to say is that you were the best performing top laner last split uh, at Worlds while it was a struggle for all of Europe. Um, but I think that that's going to be one of the big things that people, I know fans are looking for is like with a couple Korean players now coming to Europe, how top laners stack against them and the level of which that you and Jigenda and all top laners in Europe can bring uh, to the LEC. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a welcome change because uh, for a while now, community and everyone was complaining that top lane is a weak role in Europe. And I, I agree with that sentiment. I think top lane didn't really have a lot of, you know, top tier players in the region. There would maybe be two, three, OK, let's say four very, very good ones that would be there consistently. But then it just felt like with, with time passing, there wouldn't be any any new top lane talent. New top lane talent that would come into the league would just be there for maybe a split max two, and then someone else, a team would just flip a coin with someone else, you know? So now that we have Korean imports in that sense with, I think, two, two of them, um, it's going to be interesting because I, I, I really do hope that they're going to be good and we have new competition that's going to stay here for a long time to kind of push some of some of us that have been here for a really long time. Yeah, elevate the region, I think, is important. Um, Goldborg, um, you know, Heretics Yankos, Mad Hill sign, which is also really insane. Um, which of these is exciting you the most, let's say, going into winter? I think going into it, I think Hillisang is going to be the more exciting one to watch for me specifically. And I think it's also a bit of the same situation. You know, he wanted to stay on Fnatic. He got moved out of the system. He has to prove himself again. Some of it goes back to what you're talking about. And, and it sucks a bit from the community sentiment because there will be a lot of pressure. But I think he's looking to try and thrive on this team like Mad Lions. I can see a potential where this can be really explosive, super exciting to watch. I mean, sadly, I can also see the other side of the coin, right? But this is also why it's so exciting to follow Hilly sang specifically. Yeah, what do you think, Odo? 
For me, it's really weird because I've seen Healy in a Fanatic jersey for six years it's now, something like that. So it became one of those things where it was kind of how we would associate Reckless with Fanatic. It kind of became the same sentiment for me with, with Healy and yeah. Fanatic. So now him in a Mad Lions jersey, it doesn't sit right with me, you know, because it's something that I really need to get used to. But I think also for him, it's it's a great opportunity to kind of relaunch himself because community perspective about him has been kind of up and down lately sure. with, with his performances and his inconsistencies. And having a new environment like this helps a lot for someone who's been there for, for a really long time, especially him, six years at Fnatic. Oh, yeah, I think that's a great note on kind of the experience players. A fresh perspective can always be great. Uh, when it comes to fresh perspective, we also have a lot of rookies, a lot coming in from the ERLs, various and they're going to light a fire under the asses of uh, some of the players that they have been here for a while. They certainly are, yeah. I think that a lot of people are looking at G2's new jungler, Yike. I think that he's a player that had a lot of prospects when he was playing in the ERLs alongside LDLC. Uh, and I think that he's an individual that when you're replacing Yankos, you have to have something, right? There has to be some element to your play or personality or something that brings something new to the team because it's very difficult to criticize Yankos' career. He is one of the most accomplished junglers, if not the most accomplished that we have here in Europe. Um, so very exciting to see if, what he can do and fill the shoes of such a legendary European jungler. I think that's the really interesting part because Yike is like the fastest growing talent we had in DRL. He played a bit of Italian Northern League, then went off to play second division LFL and then back to back with LDLC won the LFL and as a developmental player coming into it being developed I thought okay this is super exciting if he ends up in the middle of the pack team but you're replacing Yankos right and yeah. that's the big part you're not just going on to any team you're going on to G2 and with that comes expectations not just to develop but to win so I'm excited to see how he's going to thrive under those circumstances yeah Odo there's a couple of these rookies like Yike on G2 for Yankos but also Rux now uh, in that Hillisang spot and Fnatic Jack Spectra who had so much hype already um, what will be the most important things for these rookies to make sure that they you know give themselves the best chance to perform in winter I think I, I think it's it's great that they're all kind of joining teams with established coaching staffs and, and, good, and good structure with Yike and G2. There's no doubt that the coaching staff there is great because I worked with them in the past and, you know, they have a pedigree of just being historically top of the table. Um, and also Heretics with Peter Dunn, he, he has been, you know, successful throughout his, throughout his career over here and in NA. So I think... For rookies to succeed, they kind of they kind of got lucky in the sense they already or like the the big rookies, the big names, kind of got slotted into teams with with great uh, with great room to grow and great coaching staffs that can kind of foster them into what identity the team needs them to have. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, it's definitely the case. Uh, one word on Rux, maybe. He's behind us now. But what a situation, right? At Worlds, we see him. Um, and now he's a starter. I mean, you have to take it. I know when sometimes when you go be, uh, being brought into new, I mean, opportunities like this, you kind of sometimes have in the back of your head, oh, I'm only getting this, not necessarily because I'm good enough, but just because I was lucky enough to get the shot. And all of a sudden, these bad thoughts start coming up in your head. I think those are the pressure that Rox are going to be dealing with as well coming into it, because he, I think he did deserve it. He played well on those two first games he had at World Championships. And he also chased this for forever. He's been playing in the ELs for the longest time. I think his time to finally get a shot at the LEC was long overdue. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Odo Amni. You Always can, my pleasure. Uh, you can join your team because you're playing versus G2 oh, in really? a little bit. Yeah, oh. surprise. In like 15 minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. Thank you for talking to us, though. Uh, and thank good you. luck, Bye. of course. Bye. So um, we got a lot of roster changes out of the way, but we're only roughly 15 minutes, 16 minutes away from kicking off the first ever LEC winter season. Um, Oduwamne is going to go get ready and we'll get into that. Winning LEC for me didn't change anything. This shouldn't stop me from doing more than I did so far. There was a mistake to go to G2, I realized that now. Sometimes you just can't work with players even if they are very good. That team could have worked if we played through mid. We failed and that's a fact. We never really fixed that team and I'm sad that they didn't give me more of a chance. It's time for me to grow. It's also time for Caps to have a new jungler grow himself. They have Jankos now and I know he's probably gonna gank me. <laughs> so I guess that's something to look out for. Whatever we beat you to or not, that's not the main goal of the year. Is Yike gonna live up to the guy who can handle the needs of the team? 
I'm excited to showcase a better year than the last year. It should not be that much harder to do better than last year. Goodbye, Vitality! Excel and Fords to playoffs! I don't think I have to be like a full leader, but I have to show a little bit more responsibility now. I think Mark has to step up big in this team if they want to make it far. You just have to be better than the opponent. They could completely run it down. They could just like take over a game. I think more often than not, they will run it down. <laughs> For the first time when I play against Fnatic, it will be kind of weird since I've been there for a while. If you want to be a good bot lane, you have to be aggressive anyway. I think it's going to be super fun to play against Mad Lions again because I played with them for like two years. I want to just beat them and, and stomp them to the ground. I want to prove here that I'm the strongest as a good laner and that's going to be something that we need to be aware of. I'm really happy that I get the chance again to just prove to myself, to just prove everyone that uh, I'm a good person and I want to be a good player as well. You could predict any team to be anywhere. There's many reasons why the roster can fail. We can like pop off pretty easily like the underdogs team. Feels like you have more chances to show yourself, to redeem yourself. Experience is the most important. I don't have that pressure on my shoulders anymore. It's nice to be on top, but now it's the time to actually show that you're able to actually stay on the top. Brace yourselves. The winter split is here. And welcome back to the 2023 LEC Winter Split. My name is Quickshot. I want to take a few minutes just to quickly run you through our brand new format as it will be replicated in winter, spring, and summer splits. As you can see the graphics behind me, I'm gonna start playing this in a moment and we're gonna focus on the regular season, the group stage, and how teams qualify for playoffs. Let's start with the regular season where we find ourselves today. It is a 10 team, single round robin, best of one stage. After all the games are completed, we'll have our stack rankings. For today's example, let's say hypothetically that Team BDS and Astralis will finish first and second. And hypothetically, G2 Esports and Koi finished ninth and tenth. Uh, bump that one down just as well. Why I want to highlight this is simple. If you place ninth or tenth, you will be eliminated from that split and not be able to advance to the group stage. When I click the draw groups button, what you'll notice is one team of each color in each respective group. That is because First and second seed will be in pool one. Third and fourth, pool two, pool three, pool four. Each group must have one team from each of those pools. The reason that it is important to fight for seeding and why every single game counts is if you place first or second during the regular season, you have the option of selecting your opponent for round one of the group stage. Look at this bracket here for the group stage. It is a double elimination, best of three bracket. In my example here, BDS will be the number one seed and let's say they want to face off against SK. You'll notice they face SK in round one, automatically pitting Vitality and Heretics against one another. The same can happen in the bottom. Let's say Astralis, they want to go for the memes and take down Fnatic. We now have our bracket. I'm going to get a run through the top half of the group stage to show how this will play out. But of course, BDS will be taking down SK. Heretics will surprise everyone and take down Vitality. Vitality will defeat SK, let's say BDS, first team to qualify for playoffs, and Vitality, second team to qualify for playoffs. Our playoffs are, of course, going to be best of five, and we will talk about that stage later on in the winter split. That's an example of how that is going to play out. Now that we explained how a regular split works in the LEC season, I want to talk about international events. As it was recently announced, the LEC will have two teams qualifying for MSI this year in London. The spring split champion will qualify as the first seed, while the winter split champion will qualify qualify as the second seed. If a team wins both winter and spring split, it will qualify as the first seed, while the team with the next highest amount of championship points qualifies as the second seed. Stay with me, team, because for world qualification, the LEC champion and runner-up from our season finals in Montpellier will travel to Worlds as our first and second seed, respectively. Third and fourth will be decided at the season finals unless a team wins all three splits during the season, which will auto automatically qualify qualify them to Worlds at a minimum as the third seed. You can check out all the information on lolesports.com for details and explanations. Trust me, I know that it is complex, but we'll be breaking it down and showing you different examples all throughout the winter, spring, and summer splits. That's it from me. So let's head back to the desk. Excel, best of G2. Thank you very much, Trevor. Indeed, it's a lot to take in. I love uh, the tool that uh, Aika designed for us back in the back end, which we'll be playing with, right, to see how it all plays out. Because I want to go me, mess with those yeah, things. Yeah, that's <laughs> the easiest way for me to learn it, though, uh, because I'm a 
disastrous with formats overall, but a visual aid does help. Yeah, I would say, you know, getting lectured by quick shot, if you just do that like two or three more times, yeah. then it might like finally bake itself into my brain. You already but, like, got it. I mean, just of keep course. it pre-recorded. I mean, I'm just going back to the bar. There we go. Right, right. Yeah, so that's, sure. that's how we're going to do it. But uh, of course, for now, for the first three weeks, uh, it's interesting because nothing changes as to how we previously started off the splits, right? You get the best of ones, but it's like they're triple value because after those three weeks, you already have to say goodbye to two teams. Yeah, I mean, two teams in Instantly kicked. I think like the ability to choose in the first round who you're facing off against out of some of those seeds is also going to be really, really important. But also just like the fact that we get to see some best of threes, a bracket style way, just makes every week way more exciting. Definitely. So uh, as said, we're starting off with the best of ones. G2 versus Excel is our very first game that we have in winter. And we've had a bit of an introduction already to Yike. He's coming up for Jankos. GB, reset the stage for us. What can we expect? And can we expect just the same G2 like we we have been seeing it. I mean, no. I mean, you had three players, different players coming in, so no, that's not going to be the case at all whatsoever. What, what, if I want to take it back a bit, I talked with Jai about Jai on the desk earlier, and I said, well, I would have loved to see him in a development team instead. But coming into a player in G2, when you're a player like Jai that does play a lot of car six as well, that has these pocket picks, I think it's a perfect setting for him. Because G2, they're like water, they're ebb and flow, they're free flowing. Caps want to go, Dylan, let's play in vain mid. Jai go like, this is a good car six game. He's going to have the freedom to that. And that's what I'm excited to see because you get a new player. He's not going to be Jankos. He's going to be different. You need new systems around it. I'm excited to see this kind of player in a team like G2. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like in-game they are so flexible, but we have yet to see a G2 system without a jungler as communicative as Jankos. Yeah. Like, this guy is not just loud, but just constantly engaged with his teammates, feeding information, explaining what he's going to be doing. And from what I've heard, Yike is not that same way. So I think for this team, like, we know Yike has the talent, but this is now a roster where players like a Caps or Mickey X, if they're trying to make plays, they may have to do a little bit more heavy lifting in the comm side, and that will be a new test for them. That's a great point, I think, for all the memes about Jankos and Ansejuani duty, but he always did exactly what the team needed, and sometimes that was just that duty on top of um, making sure the communication was on point for G2. A lot of question marks you mentioned already. Mickey back on G2 with Hansama Goldberg. What an amazing bot lane on paper. On paper, yes. <laughs> maybe, but like, respectively, they of course have played a do it before. They never made an international. They started doing that when they no longer played together. <laughs> Reckless Jenna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's well, Continue. maybe yeah. that's just a, something in the past or it's a sign for <laughs> something in the future to come. But I think it's going to be interesting because these are probably some of the people that has the most to prove on the G2 roster. Mickey got some flag for his Yumi play last year. Yumi still very much meta. Hans didn't have the best showing with Team Liquid, but on European soil and together, I still believe the name value alone brings a lot of expectations for them. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. and looking back, like you remember the clips, I remember the Draven Morgana, how powerful that was in the bot lane. This was a duo that was exceptionally dominant in lane, looking for 2v2 kills all the time. Of course, they have gone their separate ways, and I think for these players like Han Sama and, and the failed Liquid project last year, Mickey X struggling as well, these players are now looking for big redemption on G2, and that's not the usual G2 formula either, right? It's about taking big stars and setting them up in an even better system to succeed. But this bot lane has to come out swinging early on, I feel like, to live up to the hype. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. And I think, as you say, namesake brings with it a, a lot of expectation. I think that's only natural. And unless Caps isn't on that roster anymore, you're always going to think like, all right, they yeah. will be able to do something. But as said, uh, there's a lot of changes coming in for them. Of course, their support, Targamas, no longer on G2, but now on the other side. So we have a new Excel. And for more insight on them, Let's hear from Laura, who is standing by with their new support, Targamas. Thank you, Shox and Targamas. Thank you so much for joining me. So nice to see you Thanks again with uh, with new colors. Was not expecting you to see uh, to see you in new colors, though. And I think it was the same thing for you. Tell me about the off season, this change from G2 to Excel, and how is it like playing with a new team? Yeah, so as you say, I was not really expecting it either. I think when we went back from Worlds, we knew there was going to be some changes in the team because even though we won in EU, at least the spring splits, we didn't really fulfill the expectations, which were like at least to do well at Worlds, and we didn't. So we knew there was going to be some change, but I didn't think I was going to be a victim of it. But uh, they made the decision, right, with Hansama choosing who mm -hmm. he gets to play with. Uh, for me, I don't really, I, I respect their decision, right? 
And uh, I'm just happy I found a new home with Excel, with a team that I believe we have great players, great individualities. And I think that's really important if we want to win against the better team to have like those those kind of players. And I'm really happy that I found this home. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's an interesting mix for Schnorr. And I especially want to focus on the bot lane here because I know that for the, for the longest time that I've known you with KC, with G2, you were not particularly a lane player, and for me, you being paired with Patrick especially has to mm, push something else from you style-wise, and you may have to adapt on this. Tell me about forming a synergy with this player and how you had to step up maybe in that sense. Yeah, I think for me it's a really big difference from the past years. Uh, I've always felt like I couldn't... Like it was not my job to do a lot in lane because both Matty and Flacket were not the most aggressive players and they have their own strengths, right? Uh, and with Patrick, it's different because he always wants to play more aggressive, take more risks. So I just have to adapt a bit, uh, but that's something I was looking for because it's something that's like missing in my play style. I know some people don't consider me like a strong laner and maybe that's what's missing for me to be like considered the best in Europe at least. Uh, so I'm looking forward to prove everyone wrong and that I can also be a strong laner. Tell me a, a bit more about the matchup we have coming in today because interestingly enough, you play your opening game of the season versus your former team, G2 Esports. And even though there's some new players, you're still um, going to find some players that you know. Tell me about this. How hyped are you about this one and how, and how special it feels for you? Mm, I don't know. It feels kind of weird by coming to the studio and seeing them and not being with them, right? Uh, also because it's the, the first game of the season, right? So I'm not used to the new team yet and not used to be being without them anymore. But uh, I think it would be it would be funny. Like I don't really I'm not like specifically hyped for this matchup or, or anything. Like I'm always happy to play against older teammates. Uh, but it's just gonna be fun on the rift, I guess. Is it personal for you this one or not even? Not really. Like right. honestly, I I wish them the best as well. Of course, not to win against me. I I have to take this this win today. But after that, I am hoping to meet them further in the tournament. All right, treating them as any opponent. Humble for you. Targamas, thank you so much. I'll let you join you. the team for the prep. And shocks back to you. Thank you so much, Lore. Uh, always lovely to hear from Targamas. And of course, happy that you're back doing our interviews. Um, now, when it comes to Targamas' interview, there was one thing that we heard that we all kind of looked at each other. Did we know this? Uh, him saying, Hans deciding who he wanted to play with and that didn't end up being me. I'm not sure if that was anywhere or not, but yeah, it's interesting. And of course, um, then for a player like Targamas, then there's some big decisions to be made, right? So good he's found yeah. a home in Excel. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's really good news for him. Obviously, the difference there being like having to build the synergy a little bit more from the ground up as opposed to Hans was like, we already did this. We're going to run it back. We already know that this is a dual lane that works for them. Um, but I just think it's like, it's really interesting that Hans wanted that, right? Because I, I think community perception last year around Mickey X was not very good. Mm. But Hans, knowing how good Mickey has been in the past and wanting to return to that decided to go for that that's a big vote of confidence in him as a player yeah. i think it also comes a little bit down to if i had to play devil's advocate right takamas was the kind of player that played with 80 carries where they are self-sufficient so they just stand by in bot lane and take the farm they can while he's super good at being the kind of player that enables the rest of the map so as an 80 carry if you had like having resources yourself if you have to pick between a support where you can be like oh you're going to be around me or you're going to be around the rest of the map for Hans, that could have been the decision as well. So it is quite obvious, I'd say, that it's the AD carry that gets to say what yeah. kind of support is it that I'm going to be paired up with. Yeah, and then we get Patrick and Targamas, of course, and we heard it for him. And a great question by Lore. Also, it wasn't necessarily your strength or something you worked at because you didn't have to lane prowess. Novelty, a lot of new champions pick, diversity in the draft, influencing the map. Now, though, GB, with Patrick, one of our best ADCs we've had in the league here for years, distinctly different style. It just feels like it's about time that there's a bigger team around Patrick to really elevate him to the next level. Because how many times can we continue saying, you know what, he's one of the best AD carries in the but league, but the tournament result itself never really reflects that. 
now you finally have a team around you where Odo, best top lane in the league, Cersei was the best players in Astralis, BTO shining light on Misfits, and of course Takamas as well down there in Spring Split, which was one of the best supports in the league as well with his roaming styles, they of course won back then. It, this is a super good team to have around you to finally try and start proving that, and especially, I mean, against their former teammate and, you know, with G2 as yeah. well. Yeah, I, I love that he was asked, but he's too kind. He's like too sweet. He's, he's like, so yeah, humble. He's cool. I'm sorry, I can't hang out with Support him. That trade. sucks. But um, regardless, though, uh, I think a lot of headlines will go to the Reckless Return and Koi and um, G2, of course, as always. But I'm carefully very excited about this XL lineup. It is one of familiar faces, but not to the level that you say, okay, we try to get all the best superstars in the world together. No, it feels like there's a real plan behind this. And oh, yeah. yeah, we'll see what, what comes of it. And, and for me, like, I, I'm actually less focused on Patrick when I look at this roster than I am looking at Vitio in the mid lane. Because for me, like, everything you're saying is correct, right? Like, Patrick has been so good for so long. But to me, I'm like, okay, Vitio was this sort of, like, wildfire player, yeah. right? That could yeah. absolutely take over. Um, and now you're putting around him... Zerse, Oduamne, Patrick, like just pillars of consistency in our league, especially on that top side of the map, have just been in the league for absolutely forever. And this is now a situation where VTO has the ability to be that sort of player that's put on a pedestal around with the support of those teammates. Yeah, and I don't know if you agree with me, but if we ignore the fact that this team has to build new foundations, they're coming from five different teams into one, so, you know, the trajectory might be a bit slow. But this should be a top four team. This should be a team that contests to at least get into the semifinals and later in the year try and break in for finals. That's at least my humble oh, opinion. Oh, I love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's hard to say right now because there's so many unknowns oh, yeah. with all of the teams. But I do think this is a team that you can get very excited about right now. My only hesitancy, and this is again off of VTO because I do think this is kind of the guy that makes or breaks the team mm. for them, is he just came off of uh, a year playing with Zanzar, spam ganking all the time, setting him up, you know, putting him in position whereas now he has Xerse who's been a little bit more loving of the farming junglers has a more eclectic champion pool so as they figure out their system and what all these five players come together and what that looks like what does the excel style look like it really goes uh, it's it's up in the air just yet how Xerse is going to play around VTO yeah I think that's key uh is that it's would, could, should. We actually don't know how any of these teams yeah. are going to perform. What I do know, though, is that we have a brief delay on stage. The players are finishing uh, getting ready. Of course, it is the very first time they do it on stage this winter. So perhaps they need a little bit more time. No problem, though. We're going to get Vettius back. We're going to shift a little bit. Smooth. Um, <laughs> because we luckily... We can do this? Any musical we can do this. Us? Um, so <laughs> What's up, homies? Luckily... <laughs> It is the beginning of uh, winter, meaning it's hard to quantify a lot because maybe teams will play completely different things than we thought they would or with the meta the way it is, maybe not. Uh, so, Vettius, who wins? Yeah, the winter who, wins? Yeah. who wins the winter split? <laughs> yeah, the winter we do. Split. The fans of League of Legends because we're going to get some great games. Oh, you don't like that answer? Yeah, you can actually leave our yeah. desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's good. Uh, I mean, obviously, that's a very difficult question, an unfair question. Uh, but if I was to have favorites based on what I've heard, I would say G2. Uh, wow. The, the, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, what I've heard is that, like, you made a really great point that I'm a big fan of. Great job, Desk. Um, is the, the synergy and the identity, right? Hmm. And something that we often talk about during regular season, like, that. well, let's go back to... Uh, last year, when XL came back from their boot camp from Korea, right? And everyone was like, oh, this XL, they're so good. They went like five and two. They were sitting at the top of the table after three weeks. Everyone was like, we're so impressed. And they stagnated. They didn't actually change their style anymore while mm. every other team was getting better around them. And then they just fell further and further behind. Now, when you have such a shorter season, things like that, that type of play style can be really valuable because that isn't necessarily going to be figured out. But if you have the opposite problem, where you don't actually know what your identity is, where you don't have a clear idea of how you want to play the game coming into a split, now it's a lot harder. G2 last split, they went four and five in the first half and then went eight and one in the second half. You don't have that level of flexibility anymore. You have to hit the ground running. And this is one of the concerns that I do have for XL coming into this bit because you guys make a great point. You've got a self-sufficient jungler. You've got a bot lane that wants resources and wants to dominate. You've got a mid laner that's in the same way while you've got a weak side top laner. How do you, how do you 
collect all of this together, even if the players individually are very talented. Uh, there's a 10 minute delay, um, approximately. So we do have time. Uh, I like the way you painted that though. Luckily, Oduwamna is still there and he knows what to do with that situation at least. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I, I, look, <laughs> I always am going to have my faith in Oduwamna, so don't worry about that. I did just quickly want to uh, button up your point there about sort of like coming in with a strong identity right off the rip because a big reminder to everyone, we only play on two patches yes. in this season. Yep. And the first patch, it's for the first three weeks, right? So like you will do or die on this first patch. So whoever got practicing and scrimming like early on, you know, if you started practicing three, four weeks ago, like you have a big advantage, I feel like coming in and sort of figuring out what your identity is going to be. And it's very a real possibility where we see some teams with low expectations sneaking in and some teams with higher expectations yes. potentially falling away because they have a bad read on patch one. But I'm interested to see, like, how bad can that read actually be on the current patch that we have, right? Because, You'd like, be surprised. I'm like, we've, had, we've had fanatics go 04 before yes. in the I'm, first so two weeks. The, what I'm really looking at is either, like, is the meta really already asset out, as it looks like in DLCK or LPL, or is there actually some picks that can come through that can, like, be thrown into the pot, mix it all up a bit, and that's how you get ahead of the meta. Last year, towards summer, it was Mad Lions and Excel, who was really good at that. Made jungle synergy into dive bot lane that made everything work, and you just got the early game working, and that's how you got the game going for you. Now a lot more is just the Enchanters, it's Ice of Illusion Nami, it's all about bot lane with the Seri Lulu, Yumi Siva, you know the name of the game. So I feel like just in terms of playing the game, it's not too much rocket science. I think it's a bit more lenient to get into it from last year into this year. Goldberg. Yes. The problem is. Okay, go on. Internationally, yes. Europe is recognized as one of the most creative regions on the planet. Yes. In fact, we've had a number of quotes from LCK players even saying, we just watch LEC to see what random stuff G2 plays. Like, these teams are so good at coming up with ridiculous counters. Yes. And Mickey refused to reveal his secrets. I did try and throw <laughs> him earlier. I'm like, can I expect Yumi or Lulu today? And he was just like, maybe something different. And I was like, Interesting. Yeah. And then Roman was like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I couldn't quite pry away what secrets he had. But let's not forget the famous Mordekaiser from Perk's Mickey Bot Lane into the Yumi answer. Didn't work, uh, but it was a great sentiment. Okay, and okay. I'm like, I'm excited because we know that like Jax is going to be very strong. We know Cassante is going to be very strong. We know things like that Rise and Syndra are already very prominent in the meta. But this is the team that I expect to take the meta and flip it and bring in something. Can I tell the, the story about the Pike Mordekaiser Bot Lane? You know what I'm talking about. So look, we've got time, so I'm gonna settle a personal grievance Tell me. against you. So there was this point back oh. in League of Legends <laughs> where this Garen Yumi thing was taking over the bot lane. Yeah. Yes, yes, Garen we Yumi, all remember yeah, yeah. this. Reckless was playing it down on the bot side of the map. And at one point, G2 decided to lock in uh, Mordekaiser Pike as a counter to it, right? You you just like Mordekaiser can ult the AD carry and then pour the Or even Lumi. the Garen, yeah. and then it splits them up. Yeah, right? yeah ult, you ult the Garen and then the, the Yumi's left. Um, so we're standing backstage right before we go out for a cast uh, for this game, before this pick happens. And uh, a certain grabs comes into the caster room and is like, so listen to this. Fnatic are going to lock in Garen Yumi. And we've come up with the perfect counter. And he's like, oh my god, he pulls out his notebook. He's like furiously scribbling it down. He's like, what, what is it? What is it? He's like, we're going to play Mordekaiser Pike in the bot lane. And he's like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Asking all these questions. Sure. Then we go on to the caster desk. And would you believe it? Garen first pick for Fnatic. And on the opposite side, a Mordekaiser gets locked in for G2. No Pike just I yet. That, yeah. And Vedius just casually says, um, actually, I think this Mordekaiser might just go into the bot lane. <laughs> now, keep in mind, <laughs> this pick has never happened before. He just literally, oh my God, out of exposed. nowhere, makes this. It, I was very upset. And everyone's like, Vedius is a genius. I He's a genius. He mentioned it could go anywhere. It was just suspicious that it was locked in after the Garen was locked no, in. No. I wonder if it was an answer behind oh, The truth no. comes out, the Yo, people must know. Blender comes in and just absolutely shades everybody <laughs> with this. This is because now everybody's always going to say, ah, Vedius. Yeah, and you're going <laughs> to. Oh, Vedius. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause laughs> Who did he steal matter? the information yeah. from this time? <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it's, you're, you are all really good at predicting. So I hope that you still get your flowers. Yeah, it turns out that I actually just speak to all the teams and they yeah. all tell me their drafts. <laughs> speaking, <and> they're <laughs> speaking of. Uh, so you said, okay, from what I've heard, so we're gonna guess scrims. What else have you heard? Come on. Uh, I've heard there are a couple dark horses in scrims. 
Um, but they've specifically asked me not to talk about them. Mm. Oh. Um, but G2, I, I asked Roman, Dark is it okay? Horses, heck I, I, I asked, <laughs> I asked uh, my, um, Roman, is it okay for me to talk about like G2 scrims? And he was like, oh yeah, tell everyone that we're beating everyone. Okay. And I, I was like, okay, I will tell everyone that you're beating everyone. Then I'll <laughs> randomly make an assumption. Vitality, mm. let's talk about them. Um, maybe, because in terms of kind of the hype and a lot of players, um, you know, the reckless hype or whatever, and uh, G2 maybe as always, but Bo, what has transpired around Bo finally playing his first game in the LEC is kind of larger than life, I want to say, Goldborg. It's crazy. I think it's interesting to see if he's going to be the kind of jungler that's going to come into the scene and just redefine everything that we got with junglers. You know, back in the day, it was Rainover when he joined Fnatic that kind of changed the style. Then Malrang, when he came in last year, didn't completely define it, but it got into a new point as well where the ganging style really became sufficient. And I'm excited to see if his just like kind of psychopathish kind of pathing in a jungle is going to be what people are moving on to where it's just like, nothing for my laners. I'm not a dog jungler. I'm going to move into the enemy team's jungle. I'm going to counter jungle there instead. And that's where we're going to make it happen. At least those are the stories I hear about this guy. And I'm curious to see how well that's going to translate on stage. It's funny because you're telling me stories about like running into the enemy jungle, like focused on self farming up. And it's like last year, Malrong came in, it was like, oh, help laners, you know, just spam out ganks. You could not describe a exactly. different jungler it's for a contrast. me. So I don't know, that, that, that to me excites me a lot. Yeah, for sure. One of the things that we always hear every year is that like, oh, we're so good in scrims, we're so good. Uh, XL, <laughs> especially when Cade draws on XL, he would sit there and be like, oh yeah, we'd have like this really good week of scrims <laughs> and then we'd go on stage and we'd do nothing that we did in scrims on stage. Like actually being able to perform in with the lights and with the pressure and with the crowd is like a very different experience. Every single pro will tell you that. I have the utmost confidence that Bo is the type of player yeah. that will perform exactly as he does in scrims on stage. And I think that that's the level of play that will catch a lot of teams off guard. But I guarantee you in about two, three weeks, we're going to have other junglers being like, we figured him out. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> 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 it's fine. We, he's like, he's really aggressive, but if you're ready for it, we're, it's okay, it's guys. It's so funny. Don't worry Every about week it. on PGL, <laughs> Maura, I've got him freaking out. Figure it out. Guess, week by right. week by I week. I guess he's in the playoffs. I guess he's in the summer. I guess he won the whole <laughs> season. So I think maybe the problem with Malrang specifically is that you get LEC finals Malrang at times, and then you get Lee Sin World Championship Malrang as well. And I think we're going to get oh. the same thing from Bo. This is the thing. Ah. I, I genuinely think that, like, as a player, it's unfair to put all of these expectations that he's going to be the greatest jungler ever in his very first split, especially when you're playing with a player like Perks, like, I think that he's very good at being able to enable and cater towards his players and set them up for success. But like, there's also going to be that team chemistry where they really need to figure out how they work together because identity has been the biggest issue for Vitality for years now, even before Perks joined this roster. And I don't think that this roster is making it any easier. The question is, can they actually set up both? How does that keep across lineups being the issue? I don't know. Interesting. Uh, I think one of the, <laughs> well, I, I will say their coaching staff is brand new now. Like, there are big changes to their coaching staff, and maybe that was the change that they needed, uh, acquiring um, some members from the Misfits coaching staff, where we only heard nothing but good things yeah. from the Misfits. And, like, it was... The, the difference is Misfits always had results to back that up, too. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see what this Vitality can do. But it was great hearing from Perks at the SKE event, where he basically said, uh, no, we're going to be eighth place. Don't have any expectations on us. Like, don't believe in us. It's fine. We're going to be bad. Because I really think he wants to like take that pressure away from his players, and he wants to he wants to try and uh, minimize these expectations. <laughs> See, I think that statement was hilarious out of Perks because like two days later, I'm like scrolling through Reddit and I see a headline. It's like Perks Bo is a once in a generation <laughs> player. He's going to completely change the game. I'm like, oh, okay, Perks, I, I see what you're doing here. Yeah. So talk about setting expectations. Yeah. Once in a generation is kind of a big deal. I don't know. Yeah, um, it's really cool. So hopefully we'll see an explosive match out of them. Of course, Photon in the top lane. We also have Neon, Kaiser. There's almost too much to name in terms of the changes that have come. So maybe I'll take an easier one, which is Koi. Um, of course, our reigning champions, Oduwami no longer on there. It's Shigenda now in the top lane. How much are they going to be able to hit that ground running, you feel, that is? Oh, I think that they're going to... Stomp it. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> I have so much faith in Koi um, purely because... They are the regular season kings. As much as people tend to doubt them and how they think that they're going to choke in playoffs and how, like, in the best of fives, that's where they fall short. This organization went, I believe the order was 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three first. Mm. Right, like that level of consistency comes from Larson, who is by far and away the most consistent mid laner that Europe has. 
comp who has risen to priority and dominance in the bot lane. Like, this organization has, and, and I mean, in the past, it was Odawamne. You had those three pillars that made this roster very consistent, very reliable, very good during a regular season. How will Jigenda do now that he's in a new environment? He's not in Vitality anymore. Being in a place like Koi means that that level of consistency, he will be better set up for success. Um, but I, I struggle not to believe that this team won't be a good team in the best of one. <laughs> I struggle not to believe that they won't be a good <laughs> yeah. team. Okay. I do think, though, that the, the top lane question, right, you take away three pillars, now you have two, might get a little bit wobbly. Uh, um, like, the fact that you took out Odwamne and you're now putting in, like, a raw carry top lane player. Like, Shigenda uh, is known for, like, very aggressive top lane picks. I feel like this could indicate, like, a much better bigger swing in the rogue or the koi dynamic <laughs> overall oh it's going to be a long year <laughs> um, but i so so i i do have some hesitancy so i know everyone's coming right here a lot of people coming out like very high expectations number one team in the league i'm like Yes, I know they're going to be good, but it might actually take them a little bit while longer for them to figure out what that identity is. And potentially, but I like I've I've seen that so many times as well. But we had like a carry top laner, but then it's just easier sometimes to go to the European style, which just all right, going on, and Mount then we play bot side. So actually, <laughs> exactly that. And I think as a top laner, it's way easier becoming a weak side top laner than it is for a passive AD carry to become a carry AD carry mm. instead if you sure. were to play something. And I also think, like, I have high expectations for Sugenda. I think he was done dirty when he was on Vitality. I think that was a hot mess back then. And I think that was multiple factions going into why that did not work out. I'm excited to see him finally get a shot again. I watched him a lot in the LFL when he was on Vitality B. And it was a carry top laner. It was a carry mid laner with Diplex back then that now went to C9. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how he's going to function. But I'm also not worried about the fact that he say, well, I can play GP, I can still function as weak side and make that happen. That was one of his most played champions. And defaulting to a tank afterwards, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to be fine. And I guess for most of the teams, even though we know that the knife is really on their throats in terms of you only have three weeks, you got to make it into the top eight. I think most of these teams that were already in the top half, they aren't worried about dropping down to the bottom too. They think, I feel like in their heads, they know, okay, we'll for sure survive these first three weeks. But maybe it's there that the danger lies very Perhaps. Often. That's maybe. where I think a lot of these teams are... Um, I think that these two summed it up eloquently, like being ready on the patch, making sure you have a good meta read. It's plagued so many teams before, and they've had the opportunity to then bounce back later on. You don't, you don't have that anymore. It's it's one patch. You got to be good at this patch, and if you're not. That's that it. Could be it. Speaking of, I have good news. I think we're about to get into the patch and in terms of uh, the picks and bans for XL versus G2. We took a little ring around the rosy in terms of talking about all our teams. So it was a good primer. So maybe I can entice you to some predictions since we had a delay. You have some time. XL or G2? Oh, we get to predictions. Oh. Hmm. You know what? What? We're going XL. Okay. I've got the faith. Okay. Oh, look. That's it. That's I've it. got the faith. <laughs> <laughs> day one, game one, like we're seeing XL for the first time. Like, listen, listen, Bender. I know you're new here. Okay. Uh, let me show you how that. <laughs> Stand up. Make your point. Do it. <laughs> Uh, I'm predicting G2. Uh, of course you uh, always Of course do. I am. Why Biased. wouldn't I predict G2? Mm -hmm. um, I think that the, the most compelling argument to me is that Caps finds himself in an environment where he is comfortable in that he knows how to play with Mickey and he knows how to play with Broken Blade. Mm. These two players in particular know how to play through mid. And I think that Yike, even if he's in an environment that he's not as accustomed to, I think he's going to slot in so much easier than perhaps if he was on something like a developmental team. And the fact that you have Hans there, I, it's it's difficult for me to see how a brand new team like XL will be able to find that level of synergy where I think G2 already have those core components. So I'm predicting G2. Counter offer, what if Odwamne picks okay, I'll give him mine off into Broken Blade? <laughs> how, how will oh, he fare gonna, in the top lane? Back to that, that, you how will he fare? I'm sure he will be fine, okay? <laughs> he will be fine. All right, XL or G2 because we got to toss. Oh, clo Source is close to me on my left side. I hear G2, so I say G2. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, so our delay is concluded. Woohoo, the stage is ready. Without further ado, it's time to kick off the opening day of the LEC 2023 winter season.